Good afternoon and welcome back to the workbench. Uh, this is just going to be a quick little video sort of review on this blank circuit board material that I bought from eBay a few months ago. Um, and I only got around to using it today, or yesterday in fact, but in the land of video editing none of that matters. Um, so I bought this off eBay and it was the cheapest that I could find and the largest size that I could find basically, that's what I went for. Um, I bought three each uh, sheets of single sided and three of uh, double sided um, and I'm pretty sure I bought them from the same seller and I think they're all basically the exact same thing just double sided and single sided and you can see you know that's about the size of a sheet it's uh, 200 by 300 millimeters it's the largest size that anyone seems to sell um, probably because that's kind of about the same size as an A4 sheet of paper and it's probably the largest thing they can sort of stick in an envelope and get sort of free shipping on, I'm guessing, I don't know. Um, obviously the panels you could buy for, you know, like factory use and stuff would be larger than this, but um, for hobbyist use and stuff and prototyping, I mean, you're probably never going to need something bigger than that anyway. And if you do, well, I'm sure you can find it somewhere else. Um, but yeah, for the cheap stuff, for me, that kind of thing, I just went for this, but... The uh, bigger you buy, obviously, the uh, more cost-effective it is because you're getting more per square centimeter um, for less cost. If you buy like little tiny pieces, well, it might be, um, yeah, I mean, it might be more convenient in terms of making small circuit boards, but you know, um, it's going to it's going to cost more if you bought multiple ones to make up the same area. Anyway, so the quality of this is well, it's actually pretty good to be honest. Um, Having made this board here and going through all the usual steps, I have noticed no issue with its quality whatsoever compared to any of the other material I've ever used. Um, I will say, obviously, it's not, you know, as good as the stuff you'd buy from, you know, like Farnell or RS or whatever, um, or Jaker, I would have, where I used to buy board from. Um, it's not, you know, perfect. I mean, if you look at the... Uh, the actual thing there, you can probably see there's kind of streaks of different colours through it and sort of blotches of <laughs> contamination, I suppose, and the resin or whatever it is. So there's bits of dust and stuff sort of stuck in it. Uh, I'll do a close-up um, later on, but I mean, yeah, I mean, who really cares about that, to be honest? Um, there's no manufacturer's mark either. Um, most boards typically have some sort of um, logo or name or something sort of printed on one of the internal sheets and it's um, sheets of fiberglass weave and it's sort of all stuck in there somewhere so it's uh, permanently attached and you can see that's usually red or something um, but yeah this one doesn't have that at all and the uh, like I said the fiberglass the color is sort of inconsistent there's, there's lines and stuff so I mean you know that doesn't really matter if you care about looks then you know, the, you're not probably going to want this. Uh, if you, some people I know make make projects and they use actual board like this as panels for like front panels of cases and stuff. So um, in that kind of situation, you might not want to use this because the yeah the, the color is not very uniform. Um, it's it's pretty bad if you're talking about aesthetics, but um, in terms of functionality, it's perfectly fine. And the surface does have some light scratches and dents and stuff. It's not, you know, it is definitely the budget sort of stuff, but it's not terrible at all. Um, the copper, um, the copper is definitely thinner than the other boards I've used because it etched etched a lot faster um, than those ones. So, yeah, I mean, I'm t in terms of how thick it actually is, I have no idea. Um, I'm not sure how I could measure that. I probably can't. Um, that's uh, yeah. I mean, that's that presents an advantage for prototyping because you can etch faster. Um, but it also provides a disadvantage, I guess, in terms of um, you know heat sinking capability of a of a copper plane or um, in terms of current capability. So, without knowing the exact thickness, you know, you can't make any accurate calculations if you wanted to heat sink a surface mount MOSFET or something into a large copper area you'd have to know the the, the exact thickness and they don't tell you and, and that sort of stuff so um, if you're doing any sort of precision thing like that it would be useless but if you again if you're doing stuff that advanced you're probably not going to be buying the cheapest board you possibly can um, yeah <laughs> um, 
And like I said, it obviously is thinner, so it's going to be able to carry less current um, for for a given track size. But uh, yeah, again, if you're worried about that, then you're probably going to want to buy a better quality board anyway. Um, the stuff actually came pretty good. The copper is not dented or scratched much. Um, there's no large amount of fingerprints on it. Uh, most of the fingerprints on this sheet here, you probably can't see, but there's some on there. They're all just from me handling it when I cut out this piece. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 actually pretty good. And um, they seem to have cut it with like a guillotine or something. It's got a fairly rough edge. Uh, well, I say rough. It's not usually rough, but um, it's obviously rougher than if it was cut with an actual saw or router or something. Um, so, you know, but that's sort of given for most of these large sheets if you buy them anywhere, really. I haven't seen any that weren't cut like that, so um, it's not a big deal. But it does mean that the edge is kind of a bit dinged up, so, you know, if you want to want a precision sort of put something right up the edge, you might want to rethink that. You might want to uh, trim it yourself or something if you wanted a real clean edge. But again, you know, for something this cheap, you know, it's it's not... It's not a big deal. Anyway, so the uh, single-sided and double-sided, uh, I expect, are exactly the same substrate, whatever it is. Um, it's definitely some kind of fiberglass. Uh, they claim FR4. There's also mentions of G10 and um, other things in various different listings. I mean, most of the listings, they have the same photos, but different descriptions, and no one really seems to be sure what they're selling, or at least the descriptions aren't sure. I don't know what the people are who are selling them uh, are actually, uh, do they know or not, or do they just list it, I don't have no idea. Um, it's got a barcode on the back, HX34E011, uh, I don't know if that uh, is any, means anything specific outside of China, it might just be a generic thing in the Chinese electronics markets, um, no idea really. Uh, but it is, it is tough, it is FR something, I mean, it's fiberglass something. Um, it's probably not as good quality as the stuff you'd buy from a decent supplier. Uh, in terms of, you know, like dielectric properties and stuff, and, and voltage breakdown, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, you, you shouldn't expect it to be as good as, as those kind of boards and you know, they give no specifications whatsoever for any of those properties, so again, if you're doing something that, um, you know, takes those things into account, then obviously you probably should go somewhere else. Um, but yeah, I mean, that may be a, a sort of a, an issue if maybe you're doing like RF stuff, if you're doing, you know, um, radio circuits and stuff, and there may be some sort of you know, you may have to take into account the actual dielectric properties or something. I'm not, I'm not sure. Because um, a lot of people do DIY radio and RF things. So, hey, I mean, that might matter in that case. I'm not sure. May not. Maybe there's some way of measuring it to find out if you need something precise. But, yeah, other than that, I mean, it's, um, it cuts exactly as I would expect with... Uh, the same sort of FR4 that I've bought from JCAR. Um, it drills cleanly. It uh, works well. I mean, there's a there's a slight sort of bow to it curve um, on the on the uh, short end, but it's not noticeable. Well, it's probably noticeable, but it's not critical. Um, again, it's not going to matter for most cases. Um, so, yeah, in terms of, like, for what it is, I forget the price, but it was pretty good. It was definitely, um, was definitely much more cost-effective than buying it from JCAR. JCAR sells, uh, sheets that are 300 by 300, so this is slightly smaller, but the price, I think, was about half, um, of what they were selling theirs for, so, um, yeah, it's definitely, definitely much better in terms of uh, pricing. Uh, in terms of the copper itself bonded to the substrate, um, the board I made, um, I did, you know, all the usual things that I do with them, including tinning it by hand with a soldering iron, which uh, is uh, not exactly the most friendly method of doing it. Um, but I wasn't able to lift any tracks or anything, and some of these are quite small. I think one of them even is down to like point 
three millimeter. So, um, yeah, I was able to etch it, drill it, tin it, and everything without any problems. So, in terms of the uh, adhesive quality, the uh, seems to be very good. I mean, nothing delaminated, nothing went wrong. So, yeah, I, I um, seems to be in terms of quality-wise and functionality, it, it, it's very good. I mean, the only the only real uh, quality issue is the, um, like I said, what it looks like. It just looks a bit streaky and doesn't look that nice, um, but who cares? And the copper is thinner, which may or may not worry you, um, depending on what you're doing. So, yeah, I mean, all in all, I think they're actually quite good. Um, I bought three sheets of each because I think that was the highest amount I could buy before they started charging you for shipping, so... Um, I just went with that because, you know, this will probably last me ages, three sheets of this. Um, especially the double-sided, because I don't do many double-sided boards at all, so... Um, yeah, I expect these will last me ages, and then by the time I run out I can just buy some more, and yeah, it's um, perfectly fine. So there we go, I mean, that's... Um, that's, uh, that's that. That's um, cheap if uh, something you can get from eBay. Um, it's actually pretty good, and the price is nice, and it's certainly better than um, anything else I could find. Uh, in terms of colour, well, you only get this sort of greeny, yellowy sort of thing. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it looks kind of like old linoleum. Um, I have no idea. If you care about the colour, well, you know, you're not going to enjoy this, but... Um, yeah, if you don't care, like me, well, it's perfectly fine. But yeah, you're not going to get, like, any fancy things like black or red or, <laughs> or anything like that, unless you go somewhere else. Um, but yeah, for a, for a budget, low-cost budget piece of board that seems to be really quite nice, it's actually a pretty good deal. So there we go. I would recommend it. And I'll probably be buying more in the future, unless uh, anything highly obvious uh, wrong with it shows up later on. I mean, I suppose it's uh, possible that it's um, half made of asbestos or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> or some other um, undesirable product <laughs> that uh, possibly is uh, the secret thing that's wrong with it. Um, who knows? But, yeah, it does work for what it's intended. Okay, so here's a close-up look at the board, just to see what it looks like there, and you can see uh, the copper is pretty clean and, and quite nice. As I said, the edge is not um, perfect, but, you know, you can't really expect um, perfect edge on most of these sheets if you're buying in bulk, so it's not really a big deal. There are some minor scratches on the copper, but nothing um, terrible. Um, yeah, and uh, the back side is probably, like I said, the uh, the only sort of bad quality thing really. I mean, there's the uh, little label there, but you can see this sort of line that that goes down here, and there's you know another one there. You can see the colour is not uniform at all over the uh, whole area, and you've got these sort of you know random black dots in it here and there. So you know who knows what that is, but in terms of actual, you know, structural quality and everything, it uh, seems to be perfectly fine. And um, this is the board that I just made. Um, the side where the copper is on actually comes out quite of a nice sort of soft yellow and actually looks a bit better than the back side. The back side, again, you know, we've got this sort of <laughs> two-tone sort of thing. It's uh, rather rather interesting, but yeah, I mean, it does definitely work, and you can see I've done some quite fine traces and, and stuff around here, and they've all survived well, uh, even with manually tinning them with a soldering iron, so, you know, they've been subjected to fairly high temperature, and, and nothing's lifted, nothing's uh, degraded, the um, the laminate never, never delaminated, everything worked really well and all these holes have come out cleanly 
Um, so yeah, working with it, it seems perfectly fine. Um, there's nothing really bad about it at all, as far as I can tell. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's no it's no worse or no better than any other board I've ever used. That's for sure. In fact, um, you know, compared to say your standard sort of um, SRPB stuff that I have used uh, in the past, it's uh, definitely better than that, obviously, because um, it is the fiberglass stuff. Uh, it's harder to cut, but you know, in terms of quality, it's uh, not bad. You do get this. Uh, not sure if it shows up, but it's definitely curved a little bit. Um, I think you can see that um, if it didn't show up in the previous bit where I tried to show that, it's not perfectly straight. But yeah, I mean it's a minor, a minor thing. It's not a big deal. Um, it's not critical, and obviously when you have a board or something, you screw it down into your housing or whatever. It's not really going to matter. Um, it will be held in place fine. I mean, I guess there's a possibility of, of issues with service mount components if you uh, solder them on and then you you know you, you mount the board and it gets bent a little bit and maybe ceramic capacitors could crack inductors and things. So yeah, I mean for that kind of thing you've you have to um, worry about it. But yeah, I mean. In most cases, uh, especially for prototyping and that and through hole stuff, it uh, seems good to me. So yeah, I can't uh, can't complain about it, especially for the price. Um, I forget what it was, but it was definitely pretty good. So yeah, um, that's the uh, that's the stuff. Uh, not really much else to say. So. I guess I'll uh, finish up here. Don't want to make this video too long. I said it was supposed to be quick. Um, so yeah, uh, as I said before, I'd recommend this. It's pretty good. Um, don't have too high expectations over the um, color. It is a not particularly great quality background, but hey, it works. So there we go. See you next time.